guys, it's your boy Sisso here bringing us a video today, bringing guys a Cinema 4D and Photoshop tutorial today. You guys heard me right, I definitely did say Cinema 4D, it's not a joke, and I don't know, I've just been working with it a little bit, just kinda get some assets that I wanted to start creating, learn a little bit, and uh, yeah, I kinda, I kinda fell with the idea, like I feel like I should do a Fortnite theme design here today, so I went, of course, I'm going with like the whole theme that this week is a whole Fortnite thing with the whole World Cup thing going on in New York. Um, also, congrats to Elevate, Cease, and Arkham for absolutely killing it in duos. Uh, that was for you guys yesterday, but for me, that was today. Um, they killed it in duos, and today is going to be solos for you guys today. For me, it's tomorrow, but you guys get it. So, as you can see our example here, we're doing like a cool like game slash, I guess for this case, is Fortnite themed um, environment kind of like gaming banners. So kind of like really cool taking an environment, really understanding how to like kind of break it down and stuff. And also of course, we're doing the text inside Cinema 4D, as well as we have our character render, like so kind of contrast. It's like my staple thing. I, I guess you would say like a little gradient on the left hand side kind of thing. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's also one quick thing. Um, the assets in today's video will be in the description down below for you guys to download, um, as well as my World Cup text, New York text, if you guys want to just kind of try it out and whatnot, right? Um, if you guys want to have Cinema 4D. But of course, you can replace the Cinema 4D text with regular old text as well, so don't have to go with Cinema 4D. But that's the whole thing today. So of course, if you like the video, you can just stick it down below, as always, which will mostly be the PSD of the video here today. Um, also, to add, though, if you guys want to see more Cinema 4D tutorials, you guys can let me know. This is your one and only chance, okay? Just saying. Just, just point that out there. All right, let's get this going. All right, guys, so we are in Cinema 4D. I know, it's a weird sight to see me right now, but uh, yeah, okay, so this is super, super simple. We're just doing simple old text, so I want to kind of quickly go through this. Um, okay, are you guys ready for this sentence? You guys heard this, I think, like, like at least 100 million times before anything, before I stop kind of using it, but we're going to go to MoGraph, Mo text, okay? We're going to go ahead and click on our Mo text. We're going to go make sure we're on object once it loads. And uh, why does it take so long to load? Okay. And uh, I think it's my fonts. Anyway, I'm going to go to my fonts. I'm also going to get the Burbank font because it's the Fortnite font. Um, if you guys don't have that font, I'll, like, if I don't remember, if someone doesn't have it, just remind me in the comment section below if I didn't put it in there, right? Burbank font. I'm going to align this to the middle, just like so. And I'm going to change my text to what it said before, which I believe was like Cup New York, um, just like this. Right now, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I also change the depth. You can see my depth is very really kind of like whack and whatnot. It's almost still kind of like too flat in my opinion. I'm gonna go with a 155 depth just right off the beginning. Kind of just adds a little bit of like you know I guess you would say depth, right? And uh, I'm then gonna go ahead and press Control C, Control V on my text just like so. Move this up with my green arrow, okay? Shrink it down with this tool right here, the size tool, just like this. I'm gonna click back on my Mo graph, uh, Mo text, uh, and go to my object. Go to my text, change it back to the word war, war uh, change it to the word war, world, holy shit, okay, anyway, right, so let me have this, okay, so if you guys saw my example, actually, I went ahead and make sure that the actual text uh, kind of has this weird little, I don't know if you can tell, but right under it, you can see how it kind of has this, like, almost like light kind of shining through the back, it's because in this little section here, I moved this a little bit further back, like hanging off the actual, like, back a little bit, you can see, right? So that way, kind of like the light shines through and hits this bottom part here. It looks really, really freaking cool, I think. And I'm going to go ahead now and uh, go back to this camera angle. And I'm going to go ahead and just kind of take my rotation tool, move it towards a little bit to the left, just very, very slightly. I'm going to move it a little bit more frontal, right? Okay. Then take Cup New York, take my rotation tool, and give it a little bit of just a little bit of movement, just a little bit, right? Because you want to make sure it still has that frontal view. It doesn't look like it's on an angle, unless you guys are going for an angle. But this right here is pretty much perfect. You guys are good to go. Now, for the materials, I'll give you guys a Lightroom. It should also come with um, the materials, the render settings, all that good stuff. If you guys don't have this Lightroom. However, I'm just going to take my materials. I just have a simple old color and luminance. Um, my luminance mix is at 8, let's just say. And my vib uh, my brightness, uh, excuse, me, excuse me, 15 and 10 for my mix. Just kind of keep it all nice and even. And that regard right and of course whatever color you guys want make sure you guys of course click up here and kind of like drag this hue bar to get your colors right and then for the actual color right you guys can just keep your brightness and all that stuff on the default but just change your color to the at least somewhat close to the same color as your luminance and whatnot right and you guys all have to do take the actual mat uh, the mat put it on the word I'm gonna put on the word world world that's why is it so hard to say word than world oh my god yellow okay take this on cup New York right and that's pretty much all that is like right you just take your little render region i'm just gonna render the region really quick but as you can see it looked pretty freaking cool also you can't see the bottom of the word world i did it i did it okay right so i'm gonna kind of like give this a little bit of an angle so you can actually see the bottom of it right there we go you can start seeing that little bit of a little like kind of like flare in the background so 
That's literally it. If you guys want to go ahead and just do this, one other little trick that I know you guys can do is if you guys control click on both of these, Alt G to group them together for a null object, right? If you guys want to open this up, you guys go to your bend tabs over here. You guys are bend, twist, whatever. I'm going to take bend for this instance. I take bend and put it in this group, null, but on the bottom, of course. Oops, get out of here, Razor. Uh, right? You go here, and we're just like, sponsor me! I'm just like, come on! <laughs> Alright, it's just a, it's just an update, though, okay? Unfortunately, Razor doesn't want to sponsor anything, okay? Cool. Um, bend, okay? I can take my strength. I'll take my angle. I can do some really cool different things, but I'm not going to. You guys can do some really cool different things with just these kind of things, but in a simple way as well. I just want to like, give you guys an idea for it, but this is literally all we end up doing, but for like future ideas for you guys, and you guys want to do something like really quirky and cool, definitely probably mess around with those bends because those are the simplest things to do uh, when it comes to like Cinema 40, and I just want to kind of show you guys something a little more simpler on that side. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So when you want to render it out, it's this middle button right here, right? You guys just click on it. Um, you guys should come up with this actual uh, uh, warning or whatever, right? This error, uh, because if you guys use my Lightroom, you guys make sure you go to this third tab, go to save, and make sure you guys change your output to whatever your actual desktop or wherever you want to save it to. So just make sure you guys do that and you'll be set. So once you guys render it out, I'm going to now put this inside Photoshop. I already have my example, but you guys can just render it out. It'll take like two seconds, literally. And uh, yeah, put them, just throw it in Photoshop. Let's just go ahead and move it to Photoshop. <laughs> All right, homie. So we are back in Photoshop. Obviously, right? We have our all of our assets over here. Our text we're gonna be using. The 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 the. the, the okay, that was hard. Uh, the character, whatever you guys want the character you want to use, and of course the background. When you guys are switching for your backgrounds, I'm actually gonna drag mine in while I'm saying this. Um, just like this, right? When you guys are searching for your backgrounds, I would definitely advise you guys to, uh, of course, change your. Uh, Google tools to search for higher quality images. Mine's not too high quality, but I think that's it's like like a two megapixel or four megapixels, which is like two thousand by one thousand ish. Um, the better quality, obviously, the better it is going to actually turn out. Uh, make sure you guys your assets that you're getting as well are good high quality. I believe all these are in here. Besides my background, really is a pretty good size. Um, just kind of like in quality aspect, right? So just guys know, okay. So I'm gonna just put my little picture in here, right? And uh, I'm gonna also throw in my character as well now i'm gonna say right around here i'm gonna kind of get it as close as possible to the original so i'm literally gonna go ahead and just like lower this down for a second and find out where i put my character ta-da i did it i cheated okay i just want to know where I, exactly where i put it because i just i just wanted to okay so when you guys are putting in your characters by the way uh for instance here let's just say your character wasn't as big as this for a second like you got a good you know character i would also go if you guys are using uh for fortnite use fnbr.co right if you guys don't know what that is fnbr.co is basically where i got all my assets when i used to do a lot of fortnite stuff i still kind of do of course when i'm in i'm like i mean i'm in a lot of things i have to do something sometimes right so fnbr.co if you guys go to where it says cosmetics icons you can get everything in fortnite i'm pretty sure most of you guys know by now it's more of like a newer kind of thing like oh I, I i don't know about that now everyone pretty much knows about it but you get literally everything you get some really cool little different assets uh, just kind of like put around things um it also has really high quality PNGs. So what I'm gonna do, let's just say, right? You wanna make sure you guys press Control T on your character, hold con uh, Alt and Shift, click on a corner, make it a little more bigger, okay? And then just make sure you guys kind of get like, you know, kind of like a waist kind of ratio, but also make sure the top of the head is not like this, right? You wanna leave any space. Make sure the top of the head hits and kind of like goes through the banner just a little bit. That way you kind of make a perfect separation between one side of the banner and the other side of the banner because of course when we put in that gradient little sort of like thing to like to do, um, it's just gonna be like that, right? It's just, it's gonna kind of like have this really cool contrast feel to it. So I'm gonna just make sure I have put my more exact where I'm putting mine again, but yeah. So right here, it's pretty much good for me. So I'm gonna go ahead now and also throw in my actual text as well because why the heck not, okay? Now, another part of this, I actually don't know if I have my settings. I hope I do. I think they're in here, though. Yes, I do. Okay, cool. So, one thing I would say that's really, really, I guess, would, now, how do you say this? Uh, when it comes to the world of manipulation, you guys want to make sure things flow as naturally as possible. Now, you guys are looking at this character. You guys are looking at this background. You might say to yourself, it's not that bad whatsoever when it comes to, like, the cohesiveness between the colors and whatnot. But for me, I wanted to put a little more, I guess, orange tint or orange kind of like color scheme throughout the background as well so i went ahead and also put on a, killer, a camera filter raw right so you guys can see it kind of like matches the background just a little bit more like matches the actual like kind of like the the, the uniform or whatnot so if you guys do not know about camera filter raw every time you guys uh i guess activate camera filter raw i'm just gonna quickly just duplicate this for a quick second right if you guys do not have a little page right like right how this one does make sure you guys right click convert to smart object every single time you guys go to filter camera filter raw 
okay and if you guys press okay for a second you'll see that it saves it that way you can always go back into it and change any settings and color corrections uh tweak things whenever you guys can so that's pretty much what i'm gonna do for this i'm gonna quickly show you guys what you guys should be running through when it comes through changing your color corrections of your actual uh right your background right so for my instance when it comes to like let's just put this on let's just do this right you can see kind of how it looks like this matched that pretty okay but you can see that this background currently kind of really really matches it um I, you don't have to do this is one of the things i like to do but temperature tint right it's one of the two different things you're probably gonna uh, most likely change kind of really get close to the color of the skin itself um clarity right but also in the fourth tab here hue saturation uh, uh hue saturation luminance adjustments right you guys can get in here and just say like yo i want to make my greens a little more yellow i want to make them like a little more green right you can take hey i want like i want the greens to kind of have a little bit of a blue or maybe you want like the reds to just be like or the oranges and the and the picture to be more red for some reason i have no idea or maybe more like maybe more yellow that's like your vibe but i would absolutely advise you guys to go into here make sure you guys get like a really cool close vibe towards the skin um i can't really like physically show you guys how to do it because it's one of those things that whatever skin you choose is going to be what you're going to be going for right i'm i have like an orange kind of like lumberjack kind of esque thing going on here so i went with like an orange theme right but i also went to my split toning by the way which is the fifth tab in the actual camera filter raw and mess around with this so your highlights and your saturation i didn't mess around with this but your shadows right if i lower this for a second you can see um if i just put this up the saturation of wherever it was before which is 12 right and I just take my cue bar and move it over towards like the right hand side going through you guys can get different sort of environment sort of like almost times in the day right and get this really cool theme like this looks pretty nice right here almost like midday right this looks like kind of like almost going to night right uh just like different things like that so i would definitely take your shadows as well take your saturation put it up a little bit and then move the hue bar around just to kind of see what kind of works then you press okay and you said to yourself do i like this do i not go back into it very easily by clicking on a camera filter raw right that's my quick little introduction between that um besides that i'll have other uh, little effects here that i want to actually put on because i have them saved right um Okay, so the first thing I want to go ahead and do is on my background layer, what I like to do is I'm going to make a duplicate of this background layer. So this is going to be background copy. Okay. So on this background copy, I press Control J, of course, to make a duplicate. Okay. So with this, I went ahead and went to Filter, Filter Gallery. In Filter Gallery, I'm using the Artistic Dry Brush. Okay. I'm going to zoom out for a second. Now, for my settings, I'm going to use one size. Okay. 10 detail. And I believe it's zero texture. Or it's zero brush size. There you go. It's zero ten one. Okay. So the reason why I actually end up uh, doing this, if I just kind of turn it on, turn it off, I thought Fortnite. I was thinking more cartoony, maybe like just not so like realistic. But maybe if you're using like Rainbow Six or Call of Duty, you want it to be as realistic as possible. For me though, when it comes to Fortnite, I think like more like a cartoony thing. So I think Dry Brush gave it a little more of a characteristic that it could be in a cartoon, right? So with zero twenty one dry, uh, dry brush, I press OK. Right? It kind of makes it look a little more cartoony, right? It doesn't make it look so realistic, but if you guys want to keep that theme, you guys can go ahead and absolutely just do that. I want to do that for my personal, uh, just I guess, opinions on it. So now that I have this, I can then add my little effects, which is the uh, color balance, which is one thing you're going to have to definitely do, I believe, right? When it comes to manipulating itself, I think color correction is probably the most important thing. So if I were to go to here, go to my color balance, I believe I had somewhere around like 40 for my reds. You can already see I had some more orange right i believe it had somewhere around seven and then one or negative seven actually i think it was is it negative seven it is negative seven. i was right okay <laughs> so around 40 seven zero it's like a very very simple sort of like nice like a reddish tone it kind of gets really close towards the the kind of like almost the the how do you say color scheme of my like i said my character that i'm using and this might be a little bit too much for you a little less if you want to take the opacity of it lower down a little bit right get it like in between or whatever um whatever yours has to be you guys can always go back to it it's okay uh so i would just kind of say this is for me i'm gonna say okay color balance now for you of course just move around left and right you can already see if this looks really off like right it looks like the picture uh my character standing out too much that's why i chose more towards this side because it looked like he was really like a part of the image and that to me kind of says the word flow and flow says good good says we're good you know what i mean so now that i have this i believe the other thing that i ended up doing was exposure so for this here it's more or less kind of like another thing kind of like to add a little bit of depth in a way or like kind of like uh, uh atmosphere but exposure here i'm gonna put it at point 
uh, 89, I believe it was, right? So this makes it a little more darker, right? As you can see. So what I end up doing is, is on this color mask here, or this layer mask here, if you guys do not know, a black brush, a black soft brush will erase on this layer mask. You see how it now turns black? That means it's erasing. So it's, of, of course, it's erasing the actual um, exposure, okay? So what you're gonna end up doing is you just wanna kinda like erase around uh, where it's like light's coming from, right? So you're gonna take this kind of erase around where you see light in the actual photo, right? So it kind of adds dark everywhere else and really emphasizes and allows you guys, when you guys move on to putting in like actual color effects or color lights, um, a very easy, clear way to kind of say this is all in one kind of picture, kind of like little feel to it. And I think that's pretty good. And uh, yeah, I would say last but not least, it would be a curve. I don't know if I need it in this case anymore because I kind of fixed my colors pretty well, but if you want to add a very simple little curve to it, absolutely can. And if you also want to go ahead and change this layer mask and erase it as well, you absolutely can. Just like adding a little bit of like kind of just kind of random kind of spots of erasing. It just kind of feels nice to me. I have no idea if it's a me thing or if you guys agree, but for me, I like this. So uh, now I'm going to go ahead and just kind of do like the whole gradient piece of it because it's very, very simple. If you guys were to take your pen tool, right? If, of course, you made your character hit the top of the banner and the bottom of the banner. Yeah, this is going to be very easy, right? Just kind of go through the actual character. Okay. You go over towards the left-hand side, so that way it kind of takes everything on the left-hand side and fills it in, okay? I'm going to go to my Adjustments tab, go to Gradient Map, and take the gradient that I use, which was this one right here. And for this gradient, I actually have on the left-hand side a pure black, just like so, right? Press OK. Now, if you don't always want to have this one, obviously, you're going to have you're gonna only have two different dots, one on each side, okay? Excuse me. You just want to click on the right-hand side here and make this hex code 1E, e, 1E, e, 1E. E. This is a basic, just a basic gray, right? Press OK, and then select one time around here. It'll get a, a put more grays in the midtones. If you guys if you guys don't tell, right? You can see how it's really 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 dark right now. But if I click right here, it'll make it a little bit more lighter. Now, if you want it to make it a, even a little bit more lighter, you will click on this one. Right now, it's the same exact hex code, which it should be for me at least. One E one E. You can take this and move it up just a quite a bit, like a little bit, right? Two A two A two A or whatever, right? And press OK, press OK again. <laughs> Excuse me, and kind of say like this is what I definitely want. But I kind of like the low, more of a darker feel to it, almost where you can't even tell um, 1A, 1A, 1A. That like there's too much going on here, right? That there's actually a picture back there. For me, that looks good. I'm going to say that's pretty much done, that portion there, and uh, I'm down. Okay, so I want to go ahead and kind of move towards, I guess, the lighting, I would say. So let's just go ahead and like move towards like really finessing this to make it look as good as possible and getting like the really cool lighting feel that basically this right here has, right? Let's just do this. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and show you guys how to now get from like this to like this, right? It's actually nothing besides gradients that I already kind of did. Lights, a random brushes and assets, right? Let's kind of like create the atmosphere and just, 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 that's blur. That's got, I think that's it, right? So it might look intimidating to get from here to here, but I think you guys can do this. It's actually pretty simple, okay? So I'm going to go ahead. This is the, uh, I'm just going to kind of hide this with a blue kind of pretend this is not there so I go back to kind of reference from right so I'm gonna go ahead and make a new layer above everything and I'm gonna use a soft brush okay now with this soft brush I'm gonna hold alt if you guys hold alt with a brush your brush now turns into like uh really quickly into a uh how do you call it a mm, eyedropper tool there we go so if you guys want to kind of like click around or click once and hold it and you guys can see the actual top color is changing that means it's changing the foreground color as you can see on the left hand side over here it's changing that color uh it's like a really nice little quick shortcut for you guys but for me i'm gonna basically change the color to a nice sort of like darker tone so you can see how dark this tone is here i'm not choosing anything like this like or not like this but something like this right more of a darker tone so i would say darker toned colors uh work better when it comes down to like messing around with the lighting and stuff like that okay so keep that in mind okay so on this new layer that is made soft brush here i'm gonna literally just kind of click and almost like give myself a very generous stroke, like a fairly big stroke over the entire text. Because what we're going to do is when we change this from normal to linear dodge add, you'll see the color, of course, now becomes more of like a light, more of like a cool, like just kind of a lighting feature. Okay. So for now, for me, I would say take your eraser, right? The first thing you should do, right? Take your eraser, soft brush eraser, make it as big as possible or not big as possible, big as big as you would probably need it to be. This is a pretty good size for me, right? And kind of just click and kind of finesse you know kind of give make sure you're not clicking and like clicking and erasing like this click on the outside and erasing right 
So you're getting something like this, right? We want to make sure it's nice and nice and organized, okay? Now, one thing I would notice that this is way too red. So let's just say your color that you chose is a little bit too like off, okay? Press Control U on your keyboard while you have the layer selected. Then you want to take your hue bar, move it left and right, and see which color works best. I would say I'm getting to, ooh, okay. And I, ooh, <laughs> I'm gonna say five right here is pretty good. So it's more more of an, a yellow, and I like this. Uh, I would also take your lightness and move it left and right, depending on if you like it or not. Uh, you can get some pretty good colors. Now I think this right here is way better than this, right? It just looks way, way better. It looks more like flushed out, okay? And I do like how that looks. Okay, I'm done with that part. All right, sweet. So now that I have this, kind of like have this one simple little light above the text, I can now kind of move towards making the text look almost like this. And if you guys don't know what, I, I would say this looks almost like a, like a candy, like a, like a, it just looks way cooler than this, in my opinion. I, I don't know. I want you guys to do it. It's actually pretty simple. Okay. So this word unbox right here is actually my text. So sorry about that. I don't know why I was called unbox, but this text here, I'm going to make a duplicate of. So I'm going to press control J on my keyboard. I'm going to go to filter, filter gallery, and I'm going to use the filter gallery. Which one is it? Plastic wrap. Okay. My settings are eight. 12 and 9 uh you guys can mess around and see if you guys like something more like if you guys go up on this it looks really really cool like a really really plastic crappy like strength wise i don't know i don't i don't i don't hate like any higher but detail i think is a little bit too much i think 12 is a good sweet spot and smooth this is a pretty good sweet spot on nine as well so i'm gonna press okay on this part here i have 10 12 and 9 now okay press okay now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I add in a layer mask. So this does, as we did before, black erases, white fills in. I take a soft brush, have the foreground color be black, as you can see, right? I want to erase a bit of these sort of like outside spots. I don't want it to be too plasticky where it kind of looks kind of weird. Um, I want it to be, you know, not weird. <laughs> so I'm going to erase this inside portions. I just like how the face looks, okay? right i'll take this erase that a bit right i'll take the bottoms here i don't i definitely do not like that okay take the bottoms get those erased get in between these letters here right because really all you want is the face to be that kind of plastic wrappy look to it i think it looks pretty freaking cool you guys can be the judge or not um you just skip this if you guys don't like it but i do and i'm gonna do it i'm gonna erase it though here we go okay Okay, now at any point you gotta fill it back in, you press X again, it'll change the color to white. You see, because white fills in, right? You can just go back in there and fill it back in. Black erases, that's how I'm quick switching. Okay, and okay, I like that. So as you can see, I think this looks better than this. You can be the judge though. Um, the D looks a little bit weird here. Okay, there we go. I'm a fan of that, sweet. So, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new layer once again. <laughs> take my brush once again a soft brush make it pretty big okay hold alt once again i get a nice little color picker and i'm gonna select some of these trees around here and get a nice little sort of darker gray tone gray right or a muted tone i would say more muted not too much vibrance okay so now i'm gonna go ahead and say where all the light is okay i'm gonna click right so there's light here light shining through here light shining through here light shining through here even light shining through here okay i'll take this though and th take it below the actual text though and I'll keep it below the actual, uh, how do you say, the um, the skin uh, skin as well, or the, the character in this case as well, right? I'm just going to only put it right above the actual gradient, just so you guys know, okay? I'm going to only put it to show the actual light coming from the gradient, so I don't actually mix anything up. So, now I change my blender from normal to linear dodge add. So now all this light is going to be coming from different areas, and it'll make a lot of sense to people looking at it and be like, oh, dude, there's a lot of light coming here, right? So I think this kind of like pops up all that light really emphasizes really understands like why the text is probably lit up but we cannot miss the character a lot of you guys miss the character when i actually see some of you guys do these kind of styles where like you're doing some cool like lighting effects right be a little bit consistent you don't have to be super methodical about it i don't personally i choose not to like be super like how do you say strict on like lighting it has to be this way or it has to be angled this way yada 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 uh, unless i'm doing like, a really expensive project let's say or whatever and i have to actually think about it and study it in that case but for headers like this i don't i don't i don't really care too much i just want it to look like there's light shining off the character so 
I'm actually going to be a little bit, I guess you would say, uh, specific on it and make sure the light is only coming from his left shoulder, right? It's kind of like hitting his left shoulder. So for this, I'm going to go ahead and make sure the skin here, okay, make a new layer above the skin, right click, clipping mask that to this one skin. This layer now that's clipping mask can only be whatever's on it will only be shown on the actual skin itself. Take your brush. I'm going to take my soft brush, make it a bit a little smaller, hold alt select one of these nice little oranges on his shirt here or whatever color you guys are choosing right and then just click and kind of like hover not like click on this not do this okay we're clicking on the outside and being a little more finessed about it okay a lot of you guys need finesse in your life um right and kind of like do something like that right kind of like slightly cover his left side now change your blood mode to linear dodge add and you'll see it kind of looks like there's light kind of shining on him and now he looks almost a part of the image and this is getting a really, really nice feel to it. And I'm gonna do this now, make another new layer above everything. Take this color here, click somewhere down here, right? Linear dodge add as well. Kind of light shining on his stomach as well, right? I think that looks pretty freaking dope, as you guys can see, right? I like that. I'm definitely a fan of what's going on here. We're gonna put in the word Fortnite as well. Just like this, okay? Sweet. Now, I think another part, what I would have to do is the whole little foliage and assets. Let's see what and do that now. So, excuse me, I'm gonna take my assets. I'm gonna go over here. Let's go ahead and get rid of this. We already did that. We already have this. Let's put in, we already have this. Let's put in the leaves, okay? So for the leaves, I'm gonna leave them pretty big, okay? The reason I'm gonna do that is because even though they're super big, it makes for an easy way to kind of blur them out to kind of be saying like, hey, it's in our focal point, right? When things are super close, other things are far away the things that you're looking at are going to be in focus the other things are not going to be so when you're like that kind of like if you're using a camera at the focal point of course whatever is far away and you focus on the far away stuff whatever's close is going to be of course blurred out but if you focus on something close and the things on the back are going to be far away are going to be blurred out kind of thing right so what we're going to do is make these fairly big to say trick your eyes and say when we blur them out it's like hey they're super close you're like looking over or through them right so now let's move it like this that looks pretty good okay I make another one or duplicate another one. By the way, the way I quickly did that was held alt, drag it over, just like that. Very simple, right? Alt is a quick shortcut for uh, uh, duplicating. And then when you just drag it, it kind of like says to your program, like, yo, I'm just dragging another duplicate over, like really quickly. Okay, we'll do something like that. I'll also do another one over here. I, th I love how it looks, by the way, like on this black background. There's like this leaf color. It's super, super dope. Okay, something like that. I like that. Now, what I would probably say to you guys, if uh, your foliage using different like different colors of leaves, go into, actually I'll do that in a second. I'll do my, ne my next example. Let me just finish this off really quick though. Um, let's go ahead now, go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and blur it by about four, I would say is a pretty good number. Four pixels, press okay. And now since you go to your filter again, you see how your recent thing is Gaussian blur. You can just click on each of these now, right? And go alt, Control shift or sh control shift uh excuse me control alt and f sorry so you guys click on your new your layer that's not blurred control alt f it takes your same exact filter from before and now they're both blurred okay so now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take this little thing this little uh this little like vine is kind of stuff right and I'm gonna tell you guys what I was talking about <laughs> so if you guys are using different like leaves and stuff right let's just say like this right here. If you guys are using different leaves, you see how this leaf color is like very, very vibrant? Do not be afraid, please do not be afraid to actually change the color and the saturation. Go to filter, go to camera filter raw, right? You guys know this now. Go to your fourth tab. So your saturation for your green is way too high. It looks, it's so out of place from all the other green foliage, right? Make sure you guys change it up, right? So take this, lower it down. Let's say the hue is not right. You guys can make it more like this brownish color, make it more bluish toned. It depends on what color the actual leaves are. Make sure you guys understand that and change it as needed be, okay? So hue and the saturation under the hue and saturation adjustments will be your best friend, right? Now you can see that this kind of looks, looks almost similar. So I can now add control, alt, shift, the blur. Oh wait, the last thing wasn't blur anymore. Now I have to actually do it again. Uh, blur, Gaussian blur, four, press okay. And now we have the nice little Gaussian blur. Let's go ahead and add this baby like log here. Let's do it below the leaves, the leaves. Okay, just like randomly add a log because like why the heck not? Also, what, what happened to my log? Bro, get my log back. Gimme. 
give me there it is okay uh also i named a log i probably just gonna <laughs> look looked at it okay we have a random log now let's put a little light on our log okay clip mask uh, just like before like if we did this uh, this render over here we take this okay there's now light shining on this not yet until we change it change the blend over to uh linear dodge add control u put my lightness up a little bit get some like light shining on that log right that's a little bit too white i'm actually going to colorize it let's actually make it more of a color okay something like this i think we'll see if that works if it doesn't we're gonna actually do like we're just gonna deal with it for now that looks like absolute ass okay um <laughs> we're just gonna make it white for now for now i would probably make it like a little bit more of a yellowish tint but i think this is pretty okay for now just kind of have a little bit of light shining on it um or even not even have it in there i kind of have it hiding behind this the fo uh the foliage leaves like ta-da there you go right uh, i'm gonna go back to the text below the text i'm gonna add in this acorn okay nice little acorn going on just like peeking out behind it we'll add multiple right all right just like that okay i think we are pretty much done besides actually a couple things actually so this background here uh which is right here the background copy i'm gonna make another copy of this background copy so this is copy number two which is background copy copy <laughs> right so i'm gonna go to filter blur gaussian blur go to three pixels press ok layer mask once again take my black brush and i want all the corners really to be blurred out so all this inside will be fine but the corners will be blurred out i'm actually gonna erase everything for a second right press x on my keyboard it makes it white now white fills in as you guys know and go back around and make these kind of like corners blurred right you kind of see that if i want to blur something out back here i can blur it out because why the heck not right yeah looks pretty good okay now to finalize this entire thing i'm gonna go ahead and group everything together so i'm gonna click on the top layer scroll all the way down click on the bottom layer control g to merge it all together control j to make a duplicate uh just so you guys know it takes a little bit extra longer usually when you guys have smart objects to duplicate things or an entire group at least that has a lot of different smart objects in there so as you can see mine is not done loading yet but now it's done loading press control e to merge it all together so now the entire thing is in one single layer okay of course right click smart object right filter camera filter raw right and we're gonna go ahead and say move this here for this final color correction we're gonna go ahead and you're gonna use a temperature Let's say the temperature when I'm a little more warmer, you can move that up. Let's say you want to add a little more pinkish tones in there. I would definitely add some clarity in here as well. Oh, that looks, that actually looks fantastic, bro. We're going to take the vibrance as well, move this up as well. And we're even going to say to ourselves, let's say the greens. I want the greens to be a different color green, right? You already did everything. As long as you match all these greens, if you guys change the green hue, you guys can see you can get some really cool colors. I think it looks freaking fantastic as well. Press OK. And now we kind of have this finalized. I'm actually going to put a little bit of my darks down. So I'm going to see my darks and put them down. It's almost like using your contrast. Be careful because this is going to get a little bit too dark. Right? And then I'm going to say OK. All right. I'm going to go ahead and say we are pretty much done. I think when it comes to you guys, when you guys want to finalize some more things, you guys can go to fnbr.co again. I'm not sponsored by them or anything about that. We just know that program to be, or that website to be where you get assets from. Um, so yeah, absolutely kill it. Add some like little stickers or whatnot, or add some like lightning. I have no freaking idea. Add whatever the heck you guys want to do. Rain, acorns falling, um, random nuts everywhere. All right, you know what I mean. Um, so yeah. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video here today. As always, guys, 200 likes on the video equals a secret down below. Uh, below. What well, I said that's so weird. 200 likes on the video equals a secret down below, which will most likely be the PSD of the video here today. And, uh, yeah, if you guys want to see more Cinema 4D, little simple Cinema 4D stuff, I am totally down to do so. I wonder if you guys are. You guys be the judge. Um, more Fortnite, more game-related stuff, just let me know in the comment section below. As well as, if you guys enjoy, just make sure you guys subscribe if you guys haven't subscribed already. Also, if you, if you are subscribed, you guys make sure you guys always get notified. Hit the bell icon. I never say it, but I would say it right now. Um, I, you guys, I see a lot of you guys in the Nodi gang. We call it the Nodi gang. Sure, why not? Best gang around, I guess you'd say. And, uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys one more time so very much. Talk to you guys later. Sensei HQ out. Do not forget to keep smiling. Stay positive and stay freaking productive, guys. Later. Much love.